everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, as always, I'm so excited to be able to talk to Michael Horn. Michael, thank you so much for joining us again. I have so many questions today for you and uh, some questions from our listeners as well. But before we get into all that, I always think it's a great idea for you to introduce yourself. Tell us about who you are, what you're working on maybe now, and um, tell us about Billy too. Just for folks that don't know who Billy is and never heard of him before. So I'm going to let you take it away and give us your best explanation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> the usual hoarseness here. Well, for those who don't know, uh, Billy Meyer is a now 87-year-old man who claims that since he was a five-year-old boy that he's been meeting with human beings from another star system for all these many, many years. He has produced, meaning presented, not made, v voluminous uh, numbers of uh, photographs, films, videos, uh, independently analyzed and authenticated by actual UFO, and even more importantly than UFO, actual photographic special effects, film, TV, movie experts, not the people online that run around chasing lights on the sky and saying that they're experiencers and contactees and experts, real expert people in this field who had no ax to grind one way or the other when the investigation began and when they were presented evidence for examination. We have all this freely available. It's on my blog. You'll have a website link to that later on. You can read it. You can question it. We have U.S. astronaut, the late Gordon Cooper. These photos are authentic. This man meets with extraterrestrials. We have a former top intelligence officer, United States Air Force Office of Special Investigation and Department of Defense, a skeptic, interrogated me for three months, said it was a hoax. But at the end of five more months of investigation said, it's 100% authentic. I will take on any skeptics on your behalf. He wrote a whole article on how anybody can approach this information and the evidence and determine the truth for themselves. Here's Billy Meyer, an unassuming, one-armed man living in a rural part of Switzerland, doesn't run around making claims, lectures, nothing. He writes, he presents his information. He's published over 45,000 pages of information to date. I got especially interested. I was introduced to this in 1979. I got especially interested in 1988 because two years prior to that, I'd read 1,800 pages of transcripts that were allegedly of the conversations this man, Billy Meyer, is having with these, at the time they were called, at the time, Pleiadian extraterrestrials. Fascinating stuff. At that time, there were maybe 100, 115 of these conversations. There's over 980, I think it is now, some crazy number uh, uh, that is just 890 or 980. It's just a massive number. And I then, two years after that, as I said, in 1988, I saw an article in the newspaper. It was supposedly a new discovery by Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories on the connection between the A-bomb explosions and testing and the ozone damage. Brand new information. I read that information two years prior. I reached under the bed. There it was, and pages more, pages more. That set me to being very attentive about things that would pop up on the, you know, at the time there's still a lot of radio news going on, TV, newspapers, online. To date, over 250 specific error-free examples of prophetically accurate scientific, environmental, geopolitical, medical, 
and economic information. And the kicker is, as I said, no errors, copyright verified stuff. The only way this information could have been gained to a scientific and legal standard was either through space and or time travel. So far, since we've had, for instance, when the intelligence guy wrote his article since then, no skeptics will attack. Since we've presented over and over again evidence of time travel, nobody will try to attack that. This is really made not for scientists. We don't need the scientists to, to corroborate this. They are reporting on discoveries and events that are occurring. And we're saying, yeah, we already know that. Here it is. It's this, it's this, it's this. They don't want to know. They don't want to acknowledge it. And they don't want you to know. Because the scientists in our world, this is a little far afield, they are the experts, except they're not. In some areas, they are. Absolutely. And in certain sciences, fantastic. We are grateful because we can't rely on extraterrestrials to do our work for us. But this is far and away above. There is nobody in ufology, UAPs, the Lou Elizondos, all these people that are just chewing up the time and all the rest, babbling about stuff. They have no evidence. This is where the real evidence is. This is where the real evidence is. And we'll probably get into speaking about this in a little while because we have, we're going to discuss, I think, Carolyn, you, Carolyn, I'm sorry, you said there's questions you have. And we're going to be referring a little later on to that book because we need to have not only answers about what, you know, what was said back then and all the rest, which is very important yeah. because the things that were said back then are happening now. What do we do about it, right? We're going to get to that today for sure. Awesome, awesome. Um, a lot of folks are very concerned about um, prophecies, and they're they're asking a lot of questions about Billy's prophecies. Uh, one in particular that I'd like to talk about first is what's happening in Italy. Now, a lot of folks may not know about what's happening, but it's real. Uh, you may not hear it on the mainstream legacy media. But there are, there is lots of information out there. Um, they're going through it in Italy with volcano eruptions, earthquakes. People that have gone there uh, as tourists are petrified and leaving. I've seen video myself and photographs of what's going on, and I know Billy predicted a lot of that. Well, we'll get into that right now, then, and I'll, let me just say that. I and others have been sending this information to people in Italy, to consulates, etc. Let's see what we're talking about. Now, I'll try and keep this tighter than my usual ex explosions, but there's plenty to talk about here. Yes. I'm going to read you something, and this is from a document from 1948. And this is a document that was provided to Billy at the time in 1948, when he was only an 11 year old boy and it was provided to him by his teacher, his extraterrestrial teacher named Svat. And there are a few hundred specific sentence or sentence paragraphs in here. I'm gonna jump way ahead to 231 because it also must be said that many things in these prophecies and predictions are put out of order deliberately because people otherwise are going to try to be linear and say, oh, this happened, let's look for this. And we become like deer in the headlights, lost, seeking entertainment, maybe to be scared, but we don't take it seriously. That being said, 231. Everything will continue to an increasing extent, the signs of which will be the great earthquakes in central Italy, which will be the beginning phase of the fulfillment of those happenings, which will bring many catastrophes and much terribleness and much suffering, hardship, misery, and destruction over the earth. Now, I'm going to go back in this document. My search term is Italy. So, Here's, an, here's another one, I'm in, we'll be going 
farther back from the year 2016. When you, when you say your search term is Italy, you're talking about on your blog, right? They fly yes. blog. And yes. of course, I'll have that link running across the screen as oh, well, as well as in the description of this video. So folks, I'll try to put everything that Michael is talking about today in, in the links down there. All right, true. Go right ahead. Okay, so in this one, which is, we go back to number, or we go up to number 257, from the year 2016 and beyond, however, those earthquakes in central Italy and around the world will follow, along with severe sea quakes, which will form the beginning of the great coming catastrophes and all predicted terribleness that will be accompanied by immense natural catastrophes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to get back to Italy here. All right. Now, this, I think, is the start of these specific warnings of the, and where the volcanoes are named. But before I go there, I'm going to refer, we, we were told that between 2015, 2017, 2016, there would be these earthquakes in central Italy. You will have links to these articles on these earthquakes. We've published many articles relevant to this. Those earthquakes took place primarily in 2016. And you, the viewer, the reader, the concerned person, will be able to go right to that, click on it, and you will find, see, while this is on my blog, the information about those earthquakes is not. It's on official sites speaking about the strongest earthquakes on record. 2016 in Italy. Now, that being said, let's get into the meat of the matter. We travel farther back to number 223. But also in the south of Europe, the all transforming consequences will be enormous when the volcanoes of Mount Etna, Vesuvius, and Stromboli, as well as the submarine largest active volcano of Europe, Mount Marsili, we haven't heard too much yet in the news, but it's become active. Mount Marsili off the coast of Italy, together with about two dozen further submarine volcanoes in the Mediterranean, begin to erupt. Submarine, underwater. Wait, we'll get there. Now we go to 224, because this is pertinent to what Carol Ann is telling and showing you right now. Also, that the caldera, that is to say, the supervolcano, pronounced here, I believe it's Flegrean Fields or Campi Flegrei in Italy, is already making itself more and more noticeable in order to tear open the earth in the distant future. It's the one they're talking about now. Now we go to 225. In Italy and Sicily, here he's re reiterating, alone there are 24 dangerous mainland, inland, and submarine volcanoes, three of which are caldera areas, cauldron, caldera, which will cause much terribleness in the coming distant times. Now we go to 226. The fact that by far the most active volcanoes are submarine and are extremely active is not yet known by the Earth humanity in general because these largely unknown underwater volcanoes, which are upon the Earth in their hundreds of thousands, never break through the surface of the water. A whole ring, 227, of such underwater volcanoes lies on the peaks of the largest mountain chain in the world, the Middle Ocean Ridge, which, however, is still today not known to the Earth humanity. We have more. 228, 
particularly from the year 2001, the southern Italian volcanoes will be particularly active, whereby great activity will be shown by Stromboli in 2002 and Mount Etna in 2003. Some more, those occurred as well. In the new millennium, greater activity will also take place in Vesuvius in Italy, in, as well as great volcanic activity on the southwest coast of South America, and especially on Sumatra and other areas in Indonesia. Watch those. Those are going to happen. So what we have here is very specific. It, they're not, he's not going Nostradamus. Oh, someday something will shake. What's going to happen first? These powerful earthquakes. They happened. There will be earthquakes even before those in, in Italy, specifically Stromboli, Mount Etna, and there's other stuff about Vesuvius as well. And then he says, you know, Campi Flegre, that's the caldera. It's going to just be, that's the one right now. We have sent warnings upon warnings to people in Italy. There's an Italian group connected with this study. They're trying to get attention. But the Italian government, the people think that, the, you know, they actually was told, instead of doing anything practical recently, they sent up a helicopter with some religious relic to fly around and bless the area. Sorry, folks. Not going to help. Now, I have so, heard that they were recommended to start evacuating people, and they're not doing it. We sent out, we have a blog, you know, you'll have all of this. You'll be able to pick and choose which ones. They'll be all there for people. If you want to know, we've been warning about this. Billy's warning started in 48. And then as they proceed through the decades, when when we and others are coming to, into awareness, we're publishing them. This mm -hmm. is copyright verified. It didn't happen with the Billy Myers warning about this starting yesterday. Yeah. Well, what do you is, Yes, what do you say? I'm sorry. What do you say to the um, skeptics who who will say things like, "Well, we all know there's volcanoes all over the globe, and these are guesses on Billy's part, and you know they're not really prophecies." I mean, what would you say to the skeptic out there? Well, it's very simple. None of the skeptics that will ever say or have said those things, not a one of them, has ever given a specific bit of prescient pre you know pre knowledge information about specific events, locations, etc., and the consequences of this, that, and anything. They can say, oh, we know this will happen. We have over 250 specific error-free examples, specific, not vague, of environmental, geopolitical, uh, scientific of all sorts, medical and economic information. Billy Meyer has been warning about this coming financial collapse. I have a video up from 2006, it's been there. When he told me what the Iraq war is fundamentally about our dollar, forget about oil, that's not the underlying reason. If things go a certain way, you may as well roll cigarettes with your paper money. This is coming to this country and worldwide. And it doesn't matter which one of the candidates, whoever it is that, you know, is the final I'm just saying, I think we know at this point, but you never know. Um, they are not going to be able to wave a magic wand. And one in particular is so hopelessly stupid, incompetent, inane, and a babbling carrot that the only way they, I won't give away the gender since we love gender so much, the only way that person could have ascended into that position would have been if their party had simply said, they're our candidate and we are going to dispel all protocols required for nominations. So yeah. it tells you how desperate, and here's the thing, Meyer wrote about this candidate recently. Oh, I didn't know that. A little bit, yes. And Meyer has written in the past about Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, uh, Mitt Romney. But 
this is something what's interesting here is that they are not political when they discuss specific things or specific especially specific political situations and people they don't do it from a political standpoint because frankly politics itself is so such a hopelessly stupid dead end process that never brings peace love freedom and harmony that it's it's ridiculous to even say well if they'll only do this you ever notice and I'm going to say this, and it's going to offend people, but I'll be blogging about this soon. Politics and religion have something in common. And I'll tell you what it is. Whatever belief system someone might have where they have a God, they pray to that God, right? I mean, it's been standard operating practice for 5,000 years. They pray to their gods to change this, to make that better, to win a war or a football game, to win the lottery, buy a ticket, you know, whatever. And so there's always an appeal to a supposedly omnipotent force, pardon me, an omniscient, perfect force that you had a thought got everything right. Look, at if, if this all, all of life, if it was created by any of the, there's lots of gods out there, folks. You may not know that, but this has been going on for a long time. If any of them were the divine creators of things, they did it in perfection, just in the same way that if you look at nature, there's no mistakes. We may not like certain things about nature, and we may be in awe of others, but nature works. It has its cycles. It works. But if we have to try to tell a superior being how to fix your sad little life, then something's wrong. Now, I'll take it where it happens in politics. And then I'll jump for a moment to tell you what the antidote to all this insanity is. It really is an antidote. Um. When you have politics, and there is an article just came out by James Carville on what the Democrat candidate has to do to, to, you know, to reinvent themselves and to win. Remember, see, in America, mainly, there's other places too, but in America, we worship winning above all things, not ethics, values, morals, conduct, character, integrity, and standing by our word. And No, winning at all costs. So, James Carville, along with all the other predictable and unpredictable political pundits, is advising on what that candidate has to do with when I actually started winning. I started a couple months ago to write an article, What Trump Has to Do to Win, about this. I thought, no, nobody wants to hear this. Well, I'm going to write it now. Because you see, if you don't like what you hear from and about, verifiably, not just rumors, about a candidate if you don't like what they're about, if they're if you don't believe that they're truthful, if you believe that they are so f fluid with what they are going to do just to please this one or that one, by the way, you'd be right, but that's another sad story. Why would you vote for them? Well, if they will only, you see, if she will do this, if he will do that, they can appeal to the... Well, you like being lied to, don't you? You've been lied to all your life, especially if you're involved in politics. You've been lied to with every candidate that's ever opened their damn mouths. And you've chosen one liar over another who said they would fix the problem that the previous liars caused. And then a new liar comes forward every two to four years, whatever the electional cycle for the particular office. And they make you the same promise. And you're going to go ahead my answer is, and who cares what I say about it, I've always said, if I don't like that one or that one, it's none of the above. Well, then so-and-so could win. Well, then people who think in large numbers that they'll vote for someone who is clearly incompetent, unqualified, and a lying, cheating, greedy, power-hungry fool, well, we all will get the consequences. And by the way, folks, we're living with the consequences of that happened over and over. And it has nothing to do with Democrat or Republican so much. Although, here's what Billy Meyer actually did discuss in the recent transcript with some extraterrestrials, because they look in to see what is, not what their you know, opinion is about a person or a party. And so he said, 
and he they'd been speaking about the war in Ukraine, which America is 100% behind and caused at its core, and that this war is now to be continued insidiously and deviously controlled and financed by America is undoubtedly what the now mobilized presidential candidate Kamala Harris wants to ensure, who in her evil mendacity, deceit, and attitude is mocking the people of the Democrats, as I see it. Consequently, the American Democrats are mainly to blame for what is to come, dot, dot, dot. Oh, they're not telling us, but what more is there here? Well, there is more, and he talks about Zelensky and all that, and then there's another quote in the next paragraph. This is also in the attitude of Ms. Kamala Harris, who is seeking the presidency in America with a web of lies, as I have fathomed in her mind. Likewise, what I also found in her attitude is that she is willing to contain continue, pardon me, to maintain America's hegemonic aspirations and thereby irresponsibly further promote the war in Ukraine with immense financial contrib contributions and arms deliveries, your money and mine. America's secretive, underhanded, hegemonic behavior is also present in this woman's attitude, which is to be understood in the context of President Biden's arrangement of the Ukrainian army's warlike incursion into Russian territory in connection with the hegemonic behavior. And there's more and more and more. But just so you know, during and after President Trump's uh, run and office, uh, they were quite harsh on him and even some things beforehand. They are equal opportunity offenders because basically their attitude is, if you lie, you don't make things better. You compound the negative consequences of the inevitable truth fulfilling itself because there's something called the law of cause and effect. Let's call it the immutable creational law of cause and effect. Now, that means it's kind of simple. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It's the law of physics, right? Now, contrary to what we're taught, certainly in psychology and other places, it isn't our feelings that set things in motion initially. In every sense and in every regard and in every instance and issue, it's first our thoughts. That doesn't mean that we are conscious of all of our thoughts. As a matter of fact, the majority of humankind, all of us, people who are students of this, people who aren't, people who are very smart, people who aren't, most people, not all, but most people still are unconsciously thinking and then feelings arise. We get a feeling and if we learned how, and we will get to that, we'd find out what that thought was. But we get a feeling, and then we have another thought about what we're going to do or not do. Okay, there is a book. Now, you haven't seen me hold a book too often on this series of interviews that Carol Ann has been more than kind to conduct because she found this material and is curious, well, what's going on with this stuff? This is called The Might of the Thoughts, The Might of the thoughts. This is one of Billy Meyer's 60 books, one of about a dozen that have been translated also into English. Now, this one's a bit dog-eared, not because I have read through every page all the time, but because I've read the book, I go back to reread, because every time I could read the same sentence, the same paragraph, I'm go, wait a minute. <laughs> but that's, that's a little deeper than what I got before. No, it's not mystical stuff. Yeah, It's not New Age paranormal gobbledygook. It's not psychobabble and psychological. It deals with psychological issues, but it deals with so much and so deeply and so thoroughly and so patiently 
that while you may you're reading something, you think you get it, you read on it, you're not so sure, then you read and then it's reiterated and it's reformed. It's the essential thing that must be stated so you can see it from this side and see it from that side, not memorize a bunch of useless garbage as has been done to many, if not most of us in the American uh, educational system so we could regurgitate useless facts or some facts maybe were useless, but they weren't the result of our thinking. Now, this book is called The Might of the Thoughts. Billy says, the human being is the smith of their own destiny. A smith, for those who don't know from years and decades and centuries ago, means a blacksmith, someone who forged, literally, two hands. One hand, they held a like a forceps type of a thing that would grip a horseshoe or a piece of metal, a knife blade to me. The other hand, a heavy you know, hammer. That thing was you know, heated to glowing red hot. There's an anvil. They forged it. They beat it into shape. But deliberately with an intention because the thought is right there, what they're going to make. And what Billy is saying, what he's teaching is that we, with our thoughts, even the ones that we may think are kind of incidental, we set things in motion you ever wonder why something happens like, go, wait a minute, where did I have, uh oh, so and so, I wonder. And we start to get glimmers because something brings something to our attention. Many things pass unnoticed. What we're learning here, one of many, many things, primarily, you and I are 100% responsible for our own lives. Mm -hmm have a belief system or a religion that's your business right but as you might have gathered by now with the evidence of five thousand years in your own life nobody's coming to save you you can't rely on any outside force or whatever to give you the winners to football games and the lottery tickets and all that it feels good and we're used to, we've been trained that way and it's not an attack. It's simply a statement of fact. Nobody's going to say to me, excuse me, I have 900 examples over the past 60 years of my prayer for this and that. No, we're being honest. Because if you're not going to start with that self-honesty now, folks, you're going to be in far more trouble. All of us will be. Yeah. Nobody's going to do what's coming. Uh, Michael, the people that are giving Billy or that have given him this information, they're called the plagiarians, right? It's pronounced play yarn because the J. Oh, play yarn, right. Has that I knew that. Right. Excuse play me. Aren't. So let's just tell folks a little bit about them. And um, I know they can just go to They Fly Blog and type in any keyword in the search. And you guys have ridiculous amount of information on there. So leading into that, there are some critics that, that come on YouTube and they will leave comments and say things like, Michael's just in this to sell books. They just want to sell books. And I find that personally absurd because first of all, a lot of that information is out there for free. Yes. Am I wrong? I mean, Tons of it. Tons I've, of it I've researched so many key words on your website and I've always found answers to them, but I just think it's absurd that anybody would spend a lifetime dedicated to this work, meaning you and Billy, just to sell books. Well, let me put it this way. First of all, I'm not the only person in the world that sells books, but I do my work for this purpose, for to bring Billy's information to the Americans, English speaking people voluntarily. I'm not paid by you, by Billy. So it's voluntary. If someone says, hey, wait a minute, you mean this man writes books? Why haven't we been here? Because I'm not a great promoter. I I don't like it when people who have a book, I have films out too, four different films, five maybe, and Billy's got these books, but you don't hear me doing it because we're too used to having things sold to us. If you are interested enough to find out that yeah, these photos are real. How can I know? We have the analysis. We have got, no, we're not trying to sell you anything because frankly, when a human being that can think 
and that you know, ten years old, they're getting it these days. But that this is real. This is not a new age uh, paranormal UAP. I'm a chasing it. No, it's real. I want to know more. Here, and we, as you said, we have over twenty five hundred articles. I think it is now, but Billy's books, incomparable, incomparable things about. You know, people have different points of view. Is reincarnation real? Well, we believe it is. We believe it isn't. Well, how would we know? Why not get the best information you could read? You still may have to decide for yourself, but you're going to read stuff you've never read before that makes sense. Not beliefs. I'll give you a, a real hot button. Abortion. Wow. Right. That's a hot button. Well, here's a weird thing. And it polarizes half the country yeah. this way. What if the people on the left and the people on the right are both wrong and they're right. both and they're both right? Mm -hmm. How could that be? So I said controversial, let me give it to you. I said reincarnation. In this material, we're told as an immortal human spirit dwells deep within the superior colliculus, I think it's called in the brain. It's not a soul which doesn't exist the way we're taught. This is the part of us that is really immortal. It's not the personality. So we're told. There's books on this. Billy writes books. Reincarnation, rebirth, death and death. Stuff that you want to know, but you have to otherwise go. Somebody who says, well, I'm a con I'm going to tell you about my experiences with it. No, you're not having anything except delusions. Okay, so here's here's the thing. According to this information, because you just mentioned the play are, and so let's bring them in. They are human beings like we are, far more advanced. They have been through world wars. They have been through politics. They have been through religions. They have been through great hostilities and more. Their ancient ancestors were space travelers, gigantic people who enslaved people in different worlds. There's other worlds out there far away. They destroyed things. They finally, 52,000 years ago, settled down. And then teachers, humans who were more evolved, came to their world and said, OK, now you're ready. You are advanced enough because you can travel. So we can talk to you face to face, not like what you'll do for the people of Earth. You can't talk to them face to face. They, they won't know what to do with it. Do it another way. We can now tell you how things work. So what the play Aaron learned and what Billy teaches about is that immortal human spirit, when we pass from this life, as we all do at some point, and it's very different. No, there's no heaven with people running around and Ed and Uncle Joe and butterflies and birdies. We don't experience it consciously. But there's, it's not a fearful thing either. The fear is what we've had brought to us by belief system that says if you don't believe you'll be dipped in lead eternally that's not a loving deity that tells you believe if you're real what are you going to dip me in lead if i don't believe come on we'll leave that for now so here's what they're saying there's a process the spirit leaves the body the thing that we call the soul is really what they refer to as the psyche. It's temporary. It's kind of localized, centralized here, but it's throughout the body. It's the personality, nerve plexus, emotions, lots of things to do with the consciousness. When we die, that soul, it is in the process of dissolving. All this content is being absorbed by other aspects of life and by the spirit, but the spirit moves into this realm, this non-place, as far as we're concerned, called the beyond. It's there for a certain period of time. It could be 50 years, 100 years, it depends. Things change because of circumstances here. When the time is right, that spirit form that has all of that information about you and me, the personalities, that we were this time around and many times prior, that spirit is drawn to a mother, a female. There actually are two genders, folks, women and men, and there's a mother. 
Did he? <laughs> comes and and it's attracted at that time to the embryo which is not yet enlivened that spirit form comes in and on the 21st day the heart starts to beat as our science knows to and that is an embryo and that as the player and say because they were asked do you have abortion in your world Yes, under the rarest of circumstances, we do, because we know that prior to the 21st day, we do everything we can to not have that help happen. And after that, we really do everything we can to not have it happen. And while there can be exceptions, that, you know, the risk to another, our science is sufficiently advanced. We can take very good care of the mother, and we can monitor the fetus from that point on, even far better than you, there are things like that. And if your science, when your science, and it will, but in the meantime, we're going to go through all this crazy stuff. When our science gets advanced enough, people will know, not believe, believe. Oh, it, you know, the left. Well, you know, it, uh, six months, it doesn't matter. No, it matters. It does matter. The people on the right. Well, as soon as a woman's pregnant, that's like, no, it isn't. Now, if you folks would work with that and each other, you see what politics does and religion too, I'm sorry, it drives people apart. It only brings yeah. people right? like minded people. Oh, no, it brings us together. We're together every Sunday. We're together at the political meeting. Yeah, it's advantage oriented. It's us against them. And you can tell this. You see, when people are sane, when people haven't lost their damn minds, if somebody's left, right, center, this version of that says, well, you know, I thought about this thing today. And somebody says, well, it's not what I believe. And the person says, well, let's discuss it. In politics and religion, you discuss it. No, you don't discuss it. You argue and try and convince it. Well, what happens if you go to somebody and say, well, wait a minute. I don't see it that way, but you seem to be very, um, you know, very on this. What is it that you lay it out for me? I'll be silent. I'll make notes. Then I'm going to ask you questions. And I want to know because I don't want to simply believe something politically, religious, anyway, if it isn't true. I don't want to believe that gravity doesn't exist. And I can walk up to a second floor building and start flapping my arms. Demonstrably, we get, finally got to the point where we know gravity exists. And if I'm going to get an airplane, I want to know that the pilot knows how to fly it, certified, right. and he believes he can fly it. So in this case, right, this thing or that thing. And then we are not going to say to each other, well, God says, or this expert says that. I want your reasoning. I want to think because I want to look. I'll look at what experts have to say. I won't pay attention to religious books because they're all beliefs designed to present a point of view that you're supposed to accept right okay so let's leave that out of the equation and you can still have your belief system whatever it is about anything and you can still let's say if you're on the right and you say well i believe in that because of my religious beliefs that's fine but yeah. if if you're going to talk to me as somebody who doesn't believe the way and says i came upon information that's more logical makes better sense and liberates you and me and other people not gives license to insane liberties that do kill human life forms. You see, we're pro-life. If we are people who study this material and we go, well, of course, Meyer is so passionate about what he's the first person to warn about what we're doing to this environment and how it's going to come back to us. We talk about volcanic eruptions. Folks, what's coming from here on, that's that's the tip of the iceberg, quite literally. The melting iceberg, Meyer is the first to warn about. You name it, 47, 48, 51. Global, unnatural. There is natural global warming. Unnatural global warming. Ozone damage. Yeah. Climate change. The Phoenix, 100 straight days, over 100 degrees. Can people come to their senses? It isn't. The people on the left that are doing the green crazy stuff, the people that are selling carbon credits to try to pro this is crazy. Yeah. But no, there's no middle ground here. I got stuck on on your blog on um 
a particular page that you call the predictions of Jeremiah. Yes. I, I, I started reading all of them and oh. I'll, I'll put the link. I so must what? have sat here for two, three hours reading them and just trying to make sense. Tell us first, what is it, the predictions of Jeremiah? And sure. then um, I have a few questions based on them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you explain because some of these are are a little earth shaking and scary. Most of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jeremiah is a prophet who, as I recall, lived a couple thousand years ago. There's Enoch, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Emmanuel, who the play are and people in Myers say it's the real name of the man falsely called Jesus. There was a real guy, but it wasn't named Jesus. Even Muhammad, oh my God, it would drive people crazy. Those are six prophets prior to Billy. Those six prophets, Jeremiah will focus on him for this thing. He foresaw things, and all of these prophets, and also people like Svath, Billy's personal teacher, they had the ability, they had very, very advanced mental consciousness abilities, but they also had technological abilities available to them. Now, Jeremiah, Enoch, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Emmanuel, Muhammad, all that, these were not high-tech people, clearly. They were prophets. But they all had a mentor, as Billy did. A mentor who was of the Pleiaran race, these extraterrestrials, to teach them, to educate them, and who had the capabilities for time travel. Remember in the beginning I said, we can prove time travel to a scientific and legal standard. And I would welcome any attorneys who would like to take that on or any scientists. It takes less than 15 minutes and then you can tell me what your new reality is because it either is that or you're hanging up on me. Um, so Jeremiah is somebody who went in and he, he published a laundry list of these things, as did a number of the other prophets, and they are quite earth-shaking. And like, Carol Ann, you probably might have a couple in specific that we could try to, I'm not an ex expert, I'm not claiming you, I understand Jeremiah. Okay, yeah, no. First, let me ask you, like the book of Enoch was supposed to be left out of the Bible intentionally, is this one of those cases, too, where this information, or is this just nothing to do with anything biblical? Well, these people, they were true prophets, and they were prophets before the Bible. I mean, if Enoch, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, um, no, some were in the Old Testament, but they weren't they weren't religious. These both of the testaments were writ written after all events took place, whether that's the Old Testament or the New Testament, none of the people compiling this stuff were the actual ones. And so the, the, the so-called prophecies and predictions and all in the Bible, while some of them come down to being to some degree accurate, there's a great deal of editorial and inaccurate information. Yeah. Now, where does Billy's connection come in um, to Jeremiah? Did um, his his teacher tell him about him, or where's the connection there? Well, I asked about this early on, and now what I have to say, because I say this a lot, according to the information of the case, and I say that when I can't prove something, simply when it's information. There's a lot in the Meyer material I can't prove because it has to do with the far distant past or the as yet unarrived future or claims about things that fall within those realms. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened and began at an early time in young Edward Albert Meyer, known to us as Billy's lifetime, since he starts meeting with this man at five, by age of seven, he has the thinking capacity of a, of a 35 year old man. That doesn't happen overnight like that except that the technology available to Svath not only allowed him to accelerate Meyer's natural, and for Meyer, that was more than for most people, because this was, according to this information, an extremely, extremely ancient spirit 
having this incarnation as a young Swiss boy, so he could not only move him into knowledge rapidly, he could show him and help him to see and understand the past existences that his previous personalities and spirits were, and to do something else. And what I understood when I asked was that Meyer, over the course of time that he was tutored primarily then by Svath, met the previous prophets, all of them, who had the same at evolving, that's why they could do it, spirit form. In other words, when he would meet, let's say, Enoch or Elijah, Isaiah, whatever, that spirit indwelling in them then at that time was at that level. And here he is, this advanced. And don't ask me how that works because it's above my pay grade. And none of us have to believe it. It's You asked the question. I was curious. I asked. But yeah. it'll be far more important to us. If, here's the thing, Svath, his current teacher, clearly the capacity of any of these prophets, it seems to me, well, how do we know? How do we know? 1948, he's telling you when those earthquakes occur and where they occur before which <laughs> volcanoes become active. But there's 250, 300 other things in that document, which you folks can read. And when you start seeing the other things, the things about how the American people are going to be attacked by the government, yeah, oh, turns the police and, and and military against the government, and it will dispossess the American people, which is why I have some trepidation. It seems to me, and I could be wrong, and I'm just just spinning it way out there, that it's less likely that the orange guy is going to turn the government against the people than the babbling carrot. So who knows how it turns out because yeah. underneath it all, BlackRock and the people who really are the powers right. that move, they'll get whoever they want to do their bidding as they did with Obama. Because right. here's the thing, and people can disagree with this, and I know many will. Meyer was asked before the election with Obama, and I think it was before the timing, I'm not totally sure, but you know, he's running against Clinton. And then it's real close to that time. I, think, I guess it was once he was elected. And then he's asked because they wouldn't say in advance who will win, although he was told, and we have that, that they said the world is fortunate that power will never be laid in the hands of Hillary Clinton or your country would start a nuclear war. Okay, so someone asked about Obama and they said, well, Obama is the best human being who's ever occupied the position of the American presidency. Oh, and then all this stuff is happening. And they said, we didn't say he's the best president. He came in as a very intelligent and optimistic and committed man. He might have all sorts of personal weird things that go on, as everybody on earth does. But he intended good. But once he was in, those around him, those advisors and those advisors to the advisors made sure that he did things that were horrible and he then turned to someone who launches missiles and bombs people and uh, lies and does, does all the rest so he and they said about him he was a good man who was too weak to resist that now i, I was, believe that I, that that makes a lot of sense once the deep state gets their claws into you done it's done. It's and what they did, you remember at the time of Reagan and uh, what's his name, Carter, when that whole thing went south in, in the desert, the play Aaron said to my, they said, well, here, the problem here is, because they were talking about who's going to be the next president, and they say, you know, it's going to be Ronald Reagan, and he, it, that will lead to, to some really bad things in the future, but it's very clear that the man, Jimmy Carter, is not strong enough to right. lead. So they're not, see, politics is, you lie to yourself. First of all, you have to lie to yourself over and over. You have to deny, pardon me, the obvious. When somebody sits and says to you, uh, unburden the, and you go, hmm, mm, or frankly, and not here, just so we're, make America great again. What does that mean? Make, that means to, to force, to, to assure that something occurs, right. America, uh, which means different things to different people, great, 
what does that mean? Why do we, if we look at how what we believe greatness is, it's power. It's ruling the world. Again? But, so what if your definition of great is something like an old, fantastic culture that lasts? I know, but long. people don't break down things that way. The everyday sheeple out there, I mean, I don't even think we do. We know that they're just slogans and things, you know, catchphrases, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, because I'm, people are not learning. Right, think. right. They don't know how to think logically and intuitively. And, you know, that that plays into it. My my concern is yes. for humanity in, in general. That's why for the name of my channel, I say, discover your truth. You know, you discover your own truth. I'm not here to impart any particular truth upon you. And I'm sure you're not either, Michael, if I could speak for you. We're just, you know, providing the information. If you want to leave comments and questions, that's perfectly acceptable. But when you leave a snarky comment or, or a name calling, it gets deleted because it serves no purpose in, in my universe. You know, if, if somebody's here to berate you or me or, or Billy or call us names, deleted comment. I will ask you any question that I think is puzzling to me personally, since I'm the one that's interviewing you. And if listeners have questions, you've always taken them every time we spoke, Michael. We, we've I'm never, from it. You've never said to me, I'm not answering that question. It's ridiculous. You've always tried your best. So with the, you know, maybe, maybe we could schedule another call and talk about the book of Jeremiah and thing, because I literally have a, a bunch of questions. Now I know you said you can't answer them all and, you know, but I would like to hear your opinion on them, but. You um, want to try for. What, yeah, a couple? let's try for a couple before. Yeah, I respond. Can. I don't always answer. Meaning I don't yeah, always yeah, no. I'll respond. That's, that's that's what we're here for. Okay. So one of the things he said is, thus the great fire of iniquity shall smolder and burn and shall also give every hand to fornication so that it shall not fail that every city shall be a place of degenerate fornication. Is this global destruction that he's talking about? And and to use the word fornication a lot in the, like what do they mean what what do you think is meant by that statement? Okay, off the top of my head, since yeah. I haven't said before, yeah. I'm glad to uh, venture. There are what are called the laws of creation, accordingly. In other words, in this material, there's the way that the universe works. It's neutral. It's not a punishing. It has consequences. By the way, consequences can be pretty darn good. True. And what there's a law of provision, just to explain that. It means when you do the best you can to live according to the laws of creation, as you've learned, learned them and learning them and learning more the best you can, creation is set up neutrally to provide because the universe is abundant. We create limitation. We create the need to possess, to own, to amass, and especially to have more than somebody else because we have the maturity of not even insects do that. They, they get what they need. We are stupid. So we do that stupid yeah. stuff. And then we worship it. We think people that have a lot of money, pardon me, you know, I'm going to send money to a multi, a billionaire for his president. No, I'm not. Use your money to do it for the people. Okay, that's the way I think. I don't donate to these people that are all wealthy enough to run. Right. So fornication, the, I think, and I'm not looking at the definitions, the way part of what I understand it from here is the indiscriminate participation in simply fulfilling of lust in all forms. And in this material, they were foretelling the abuse of children and women long ago, and how these times, the selling of the bodies of children and women, the right. abuse. Okay, that, that's fornication. The indiscriminate jumping into beds and, and, and spreading, of that's fornications. And yeah. these are signs 
of a degeneration in our consciousness. Now look, I have not lived a perfect life, and I used to be a lot cuter than I am now. So I took liberties that when I sort of wised up a bit, I reined my behaviors in, and I learned things. And I love the learning because you can learn from any and everything and everybody, something or other. Every day we learn. When you study, I'm going to do it again, a book like this or any other books, please. You start to see what the cre creation, what they're talking, what's this creation thing they're talking about? The creation energy, this spirit form is a creation energy. That's the term that's used more than spirit. Now. And so when mankind gets to this point in history, because remember, we're saying here, these prophets saw, foresaw, travel to or however, and they describe what they're seeing. And by golly, those things are fulfilling. Well, that is the time when the degeneration of humankind has occurred to such a high degree and is going to go even worse. All this transhumanism, all this... 87 Billy's foretelling AI and how it destroys us potentially. We are told this comes. These are the warning signs. Prophecies and predictions, prophecies mainly, the warning signs change direction. Use your thoughts. Recognize, since you're responsible, you human being, each one of you, for what's occurring, change your thoughts. Don't go along with that in the land of the free. That's the way you give away your liberty. Change these things. How? You think, ah, yes, now it's happening, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I, that's good. Keep going. Uh, starting to know. Well, how do I know? How does that feel? Uh, I'm, feel test it safely. Yeah. Test this out. That's what this is about. It's not beliefs. There's The word isn't in here. Except to criticize that that doesn't lead you to truth. Leads you to more belief. So, human being of earth now you think you recognize now you know it's self-responsibility now what else see things as they are not as you want them to be not as you fear them they are or would be as they are because you cannot actually logically realistically have a good effect on something in your life right. or a protective unless you know what a thing is right so when a James Carville or any of the other gas bags in politics, what they have to do, she has to change it. Are they going to advise Trump to get the swing state? I don't want somebody, I don't wake up looking for a bunch of people to tell me how I should appear to them and behave every day. So I, I'm going to be popular. I'm certainly yeah. not. Does Billy say that we can change these um, prophecies, the outcomes? Can we globally you know, do something about them, change them for the better? Well, to be as honest as I can, when this material was starting to be published with prophecies, prophecies, we are told, means events that will happen with certainty if people don't recognize the coming need to change course, then at a certain point, it goes past the point of any return. The pendulum is set in motion. They're warning that if you get here, if this thing occurs, you've gone past that point. Now wow. it's a prediction. Now some things are given as predictions in certain circumstances when they've gone and seen it for sure. Unfortunately, Billy from a very young age was taken to see the things that we didn't change as well as those we could. He saw the predictions. And this has weighed on him tremendously because he spent as much, so much effort all these years, especially with the prophecy, so that people would wake up to change those things that could be changed, to soften some of the blows. But what the Pleiaran has said as well is the people of Earth don't want to know. We're sorry, collectively. They're too stupid. Oh. They're too stupid. And if we're ever offended by being told we're stupid. Yeah, people people get offended at that, but it, yeah, well it's what it is. Here's the thing. We're all ignorant. Yes. If somebody 
somebody says to me, I'd like you to solve a calculus problem or tell me what the formula for this. Thing. I, I don't know. I'm ignorant of that. I, I, I don't know that. If it's right. not, I know. I don't know. Maybe we could say closed minded in, 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 instead of. That's just, true. But the, yeah. here we have ignorant. I don't know. It's neither good nor bad. I never yeah. studied. Closed minded. I don't want to know. There you're getting into stupid. I see a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. So the people who make the stupid comments, what they really do and see some of them are predictable because they predict they, they publish under either the same names all the time or the same right. content in the same yeah. way. They're saying, I'm stupid. I think I know it. I'm embarrassed. You're not going to know who I am. So you can't equally, you know, call yeah. me up. They published, so you're identifying as a stupid person. I use my name. You yeah. use your name, people. And Unless they get wrapped up in a lot of minutia, too, like with Billy's images. Oh, that's dangling from a cord with a tree, and he made that out of two cards. Listen, you know, like I said, we're not here to convince people. You put the information out there, Michael. They do what they do with it. It's up to them. Um the, the, for instance, what's that um, Mercedes Benz thing with the WC UFO? Yeah. Explain so that in closing, because sure, sure. I've kept you way past your, your well, hour here. This is important stuff. And we, I'll say, I'll say this Billy took 63 photographs of something called the WC UFO. It's this crazy looking thing right behind my head here. 63. Okay. The one hour man living in Switzerland all before computers and everything else. Some photos he took, and he took these photos with a camera that had a viewfinder stuck at infinity so things uh, in the distance would show clearer than the foreground. He took a number of those photos at night when th things are a little weirder anyhow. And he took some, a couple of them, not a lot, where there was a car in the foreground. Now, there was a controversy. Some people say, oh, it's a toy car, it's a Mercedes, it's a Rolls Royce. My webmaster went to extraordinary lengths. She got cutting edge technology. She really didn't have a computer. She's getting stuff that as soon as it comes out, she shows definitively without a shadow of that. And no skeptic has come forward to dispute it. That car is in front closer to the photographer there was there's a famous photograph called the um the sunlight photo where there's a billy's got the craft broad daylight in front of a very barren tree oh it's a model tree you know these idiots right she, she got that stuff i think it's fringing it's a technology i know you have that info on your blog oh we, yeah plenty we, of we've talked about this in the past but you see people don't want to go back and listen to the episodes where you clearly showed pictures that she took at night proving that that was legitimate photo. They just want you to keep repeating the same answer and answer. And then he accused right. me of not, you know, I because I had a little bit of a conversation with him and he wanted to make sure that I asked you this when I told him that you already addressed this. So that's why I, I hate to do that to you again, but I know you address this many, many times before. Yes, and the simple fact is, since you know it, this being, let's say for right now, it's your most recent show, our most recent interview. It's all available for free on the site. If you, skeptic, no name, a dozen names, doesn't matter, think that this is hoax, go to where the analyses have been done and do a comparably authentic analysis that will then be examined to show it. Look, what would they search for on, on They Fly blog? If well, they wanted to find out for themselves, you know, because I remember you showed all the pictures and stuff. Where, where sure. what, what do you think they'd search for? Well, you could use the word hoax. You okay. Can use H, uh, WC UFO. You can use the word fringing. You could say uh, sunlight. There's tons of words will get you to any number of articles and photographs where it's discussed. I want to say this somewhat definitively. I mentioned a man who was um, a high-level intelligence operative. He had no interest in UFOs. He's an expat. He lives overseas. 
I've told the story a million times. I won't tell the whole thing. He interrogates me for three months He's, as a skeptic, contacts me out of blue. I don't know him. Comes back later and says, hey, this is how it works. This is authentic. And he said, look, skeptics don't know anything. He says, I took on these two skeptics. They're idiots. I demolished them. No more. Here's how it works. Let anybody read this. If they have an argument with it, here's how it works. He said, skeptics think if you find a piece of evidence, it could be a photograph of a UFO and you think it's that building, you don't even know whether he took it or not. But, but oh, it's a hoax. Therefore, the ca case is a hoax. He says, the way we in national defense, law enforcement, he was tasked with protecting the country. One of the people, that's their job. They're not chasing UFOs. He said, here's how it works. And he used this example. There's a crime that commit, there's committed. There's a dead body. There's a wallet. There's a gun. There's this and that. And there's an eyewitness. The wallet has a name and a photograph of a guy. The gun belongs to that same guy. Somebody says they saw that guy. Well, it should be a slam dunk, except you have one piece of evidence. You might have 50 pieces of evidence, but somebody says, oh, that's funny. He was at a wedding 2,000 miles away. I videotaped it. The time and date stamp, and it's in the newspapers. And here's the one piece of evidence everything gets thrown out. So for these geniuses who you know, are busy in their spare time, what just, I don't even want to guess what they search for online. They don't know anything of significance. They can't take that guy on because they were not tasked and I wasn't tasked with protecting the country. And this guy took me through lots of interesting stuff. He says, this is simple forensics, means, motive, opportunity, blah, blah, blah. He said, Billy Meyer is telling the truth. He, and this guy said, I went and I watched every video I could find of you, the films, the videos online, the interviews, even the ones I didn't understand in German. That's the most honest man based on his body language. He said, I understand body language very well. I've sat in on hundreds of interviews where I've had to watch people very, very discreetly because they could be moles. They could be selling the yeah. country out of he could potentially stand up with their finger on the new creature. He says, that's an honest man. I've seen no deception. We had another guy years ago when I put out Silent Revolution Truth. I turned off, even though Billy was speaking in German, turned off the sound for him and for the woman who was an eyewitness in India. And this guy, he was doing uh, training uh, army rangers, I think it was, to read body language because... They have to learn in a very you know split second when somebody appears, what's your sense? Are they a threat or not? He, he, I didn't know a lot more about him. I knew it. He taught NLP where they were using it for this purpose. And he's sitting there and he wa watches Billy and he watches her and he says, well, he says, the only thing I could say, uh, people who are very, you know, sometimes people, if they're dishonest, their eyelids will flash a lot. And Billy's right. eyelids flash. And then he says, but the on the other hand, it's people who are also very intelligent. And he says, I don't get any uh, cues or signals from him that he's lying or he's telling what's true for him. The same thing with this woman who was the uh, uh, diplomat you know, to the UN. She's genuine. She's just telling it like she knows it. Yeah. And you know, her body language, her expressions, her hands. So as far as I can tell, they're both honest. I, I deliberately brought this guy in. I brought in the psychologist to explain why he... Could these people be crazy? Could Billy be a crazy person? Because he talks about, yes, well, here's how he could be crazy. And the woman said, I didn't even ask. She says, on the other hand, who's to say that there are extraterrestrials? And that so she kind of, first she gives, I was looking for the negative, and then she carries on anyhow, but she gave enough of the negatives. So, see, we have to outgrow the mentality of 10-year-old adult. It would be adults who are 10-year-olds because everything online is true. Oh, and all this sure. no discernment look with you know. deep fakes and everything today you oh. can't you can't believe yeah. what you see and and the way cia has done masking and you you don't even know who's in front of you you Billy know that specifically person predicted that specifically oh did he really okay well, listen yeah. michael yeah it we're gonna really have good. to we're gonna have to do another okay. one of these because i've got so many questions left for you okay that you let me know. I mean, and and, and I'll schedule another one of these calls because we'll I've it. got a, a sheet of paper with some more questions on it. We'll do it. And look, you you know, 
we keep the idiots off the site because they suck up the bandwidth and other people it wastes their time scrolling through it. Right. But we will answer challenges. Yes. And, and I said so, that. We'll answer yeah. any, you know, I'll present any question that's intelligently put forth. If you're going to name call and berate people, we don't want to hear it. But if you have questions, leave them. I'll make sure I ask them to you. And we have to say this. Billy Meyer is a man who's never claimed to be special. He simply has done the most remarkable life experience, presenting stuff to us 25 attempts in his life. People drank all that. Right. He puts it out there. We are flawed human beings. He is a flawed human being. He still has his own issues. Let's give ourselves a break to and say, hey, instead of accusing everybody of fake, ask. Because sometimes an answer that you think is going to, oh, we got you. It, it's simply a very human response that we go, yeah, it makes sense. Right. Because remember, this guy said, if one of these is real, the whole thing is real. And then he even said, Meyer had to know where to go time and time again for 1,200 photos and films. And they told him when they'd be flying their craft so he could take those films. What do people want? He says, but with skeptics, don't waste your time. That's what he told me. Well, you've so, gone beyond, above and beyond, especially with the photographs to prove that they're authentic. So, and again, they can find all this information on They Fly blog. Uh, I'll have everything listed in the description. And, and let it start to learn people. No beliefs, no cults, no, I'm the expert. This is your own process. You can discuss it. We have online, there's online meetings around the country and in other countries. Right. But nobody's the expert. This is it. You become the expert in your life because you're the one that's going to live it. Let's make them the best lives we can because we have some challenges coming our way. Absolutely. So. We're going to talk about more of those in our next conversation. Okay, Michael? Absolutely. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch soon. I look forward to that, too. I want to post it when we get it. Thank you. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye.